Oh, oh sorry about that. It's always <laughs> I always try to squeeze in the last drink of LaCroix right before we go live on the internet. And uh, hey, everybody. Hi. Uh, it looks like we got some early arrivers here, which only means one thing, that you guys are really excited to take in the content that we are going to be sharing today. I do want to give everyone just like one minute, though, uh, just to uh, get settled in to arrive, because I don't want anybody to miss like even a single second of what we're going to be talking about here today. And I, I also, this gives me a second to do a couple bits of housekeeping. Um, I do hope that you all are enjoying your uh, early summer so far. I know I am, but that also means I've got four kids in the house right now. So at any moment, that door can open and a child could just come wandering through. So if that happens, that's not part of it. Uh, that's just one of those things about working remotely. And also, uh, as we go here, we do have our chat over, yeah, over there. Uh, so as we go, if any questions pop up, feel free to ask your questions in the chat and uh, we will do the best to get the A's to your cues uh, as we go along. But with that being said, let's just get this show on the road because it's time. And my name is Jason Stum. I'm the director of strategy here at Dealer Inspire. Uh, and for those of you who might be meeting us for just the first or second time, we are Dealer Inspire. And I'm just one of 600 passionate employees on a mission to future proof dealerships with one connected platform that sells and services more vehicles more efficiently. And today we're going to chat about chat and how you can take control of this critical communications platform to meet the needs of the modern consumer and drive your business forward. And like all your webinars, I'm, I'm just your humble host here, man. And I'm going to need to bring in some expert level help. So joining me here today are three of DI's finest to chat with you about our topic du jour. Uh, first up from the great, wide, uh, great white north, we have Ashley Graham, our senior performance manager. Uh, we also have the automotive data scientist himself. Uh, that is a self-proclaimed title, by the way. Chris Colsant, uh, who in real life is one of our uh, onboarding sales managers. Uh, we uh, also have my old friend from way back when. It's regional account supervisor, Celia Bulgarelli. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. How we doing? Doing great. Doing well. Great to be here. Oh, man. I just Look at you guys. You look so good. You are ready to go. I know you are. And listen, everybody watching at home, I didn't invite these three people on the show just for their expertise, which they have plenty of, by the way. But no, I invited them here because they all have something else in common. Uh, Ashley, uh, Celia, and Chris, they all have long and storied careers on the retail side of the car biz, which is going to come in super handy for what we're talking about today. Because with the roles they held back at the dealership, they've pretty much seen and done it all. And team, I'm sorry for uh, stalking your social profiles and stealing these pics from you. But I needed to I needed to prove that you all had dealership experience and nothing <laughs> says I worked in a dealership, Ashley, like wearing a hat uh, or, or Celia, a big red bow. <laughs> or Chris, um, I don't know what you're doing here, but when I, when I asked for a picture for you from the dealership, you sent me a picture of a newspaper. It, it's been um, a long time. How, how old are you? It's, it's been a long time, Jason, all right? Please, please. <laughs> well, anyway, again, you guys all spent a lot of time on the retail side of the business, just like I have. And so I'm so glad we're able to get together here. And I just want to start by asking you guys some questions. Um, is it cool if I put you all on the spot right away? Be good with that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's rock. Let's rock. Okay. So uh, like I just said, we all spent a bunch of time uh, in the car biz on the retail side. And I don't know. Would you like ever consider outsourcing the answering of your inbound phone calls? Is that is that something you you would have done? Absolutely no, not. No way. Mm -mm. Okay, I don't think so. I don't think so. But let me just ask you this one: what about, what about your emails? Like, would you ever have like some offsite intermediary reply to your emails on behalf of like a sales manager or or BDC rep? You know, just take your team out of that equation. No, that's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> <Not a chance. laughs> no. no. Oh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do Maybe that you would. Right? Six car stump. No. Oh, wow. You're wow. <laughs> wow. Payback for the early. How old are you, Joe? I well played, it. sir. <laughs> so I'm guessing then none of you would ever like just leave a showroom guest just like waiting around for somebody to come by and help. Right. Uh, no. None. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not a chance. Okay, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I look. I look. I know no. those questions. They were silly to ask because the answers are clearly and obviously no. So stop being ridiculous, Jason. Uh, but I think it was really important that we do that because I know not every dealer here today right now is answering their own chats. Uh, so you have customers shopping on your digital showroom right now and making yourself available to help them in the moment is really a huge opportunity for your business today. Yet for some reason, whatever it is, we just can't seem to get past this notion that the chat tool on your website is just for lead gen when it's really meant for helping your customers get the answers to their most important questions in real time, which in turn will result in more sales, trade-in, service, and parts opportunities for your team. So here's the reality, kids. 
Customer service now plays a strategic role as consumers expect to be able to engage with the business in a personal and meaningful way, however they choose. Uh, and if they choose to connect with you via chat, you should be available to pick it up. Picked it up like it was a phone. You should be able to pick it up and have that conversation. Uh, so today, in order to show you how to take your chat back, first, we're going to bust some big time myths about chat. Uh, then we'll show you how to connect chat to your digital ecosystem so you can have more conversations. And lastly, we'll give you a few tips and tricks on the best way to incorporate uh, uh, your messaging platform within your marketing. Uh, so Ashley, Chris, Celia, you guys, you guys ready to go? You want to do this? Yeah. I'm Jack. Oh, he's Jack. Let's do it then. Okay. So here's, I thought this would be fun. Uh, let's start out by busting some myths surrounding chat in general, like dealer managed chat specifically. Uh, and, and so first myth here, it's one we hear a lot from uh, dealer partners, and that is, hey, not enough people use chat for us to make it a priority. Uh, so dealers won't have chat at all, or if they do, they'll just use it as like that legion tool handled by an offsite chat team. Uh, so you set it and forget it and get on with your life. Uh, I think we really need to debunk this one. Who's got it? Who's going to take this one? I'll take this one. Seal, you, okay, Seal, you're on it. What you got? Okay, so check this one out. So I think... Honestly, we can all agree that during the pandemic, it really shook things up in perspective of how people shop. The entire consumer behavior in the snapshot is at the height of the pandemic. And it shows that conversation on our dealer websites increased by 70%. So that increased uses of chat. Those people weren't asking basic, basic questions like, how late are you open? Where are you located, right? They were asking real questions and they still are. So these questions directly impact their buying, selling, and even service decisions. So true, so true. And this is really like my most favorite chart ever because you can see this actual effect uh, on consumer behavior, uh, but chat usage didn't just go back down to previous pandemic levels in recent months, did it? No, actually not even close. So. As we're coming out of the pandemic, and you can see here that chat usage today, right now, is even higher than it was at this time last year. So more and more people are engaging with the chat. And even at the most basic level, you know, the question is, why are we outsourcing one of the ways that consumers can make a direct connection with our teams at the dealership? Yeah, that, that is some great debunking, debunking there. Celia, uh, let's check out chat myth number two. And it's a classic we're too busy to handle our own chats. Who wants to Ooh, take this I one? got this one. Ashley, <laughs> all right, you beat Chris again. Okay, you're on it. No hesitation there. What do you got? All right, so we all know that your sales team isn't selling cars 100% of the time. And a lot of our clients have BDCs, so the capability to answer those chats is there. Obviously, when the salesperson is with, the, is with a customer in-house, they should absolutely give all of their attention and not pick up an incoming chat. However, we have a lot of downtime from smoke breaks, long lunches, waiting for F and I, standing on the lot waiting for an up, waiting for an up and ignoring customers in your digital showroom. For clients who use conversations, they receive on average eight incoming chats during business hours, which should be more than manageable. But when you do the math, you see how this scales, right? Let me put it this way. Chris, you <laughs> used to be a GSM. If I were to ask you if your team could handle eight more phone calls in one day, what would you say? Absolutely. Wouldn't even think twice about it. Exactly. Maybe some dealers think that chat is just something that people use to ask service questions or basic info like directions. But if you look at a couple of the chats we have here on the screen, you see people are asking real questions about buying and selling a vehicle. Why would you turn down the opportunity to answer these questions in real time? Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy because if we look at some of these questions, I'm like, you know, there's people asking about, hey, is this available? Can I trade this in? How much would you give me for that? I mean, like legit right. real buying and selling yeah. questions here. And exactly. that is great stuff, uh, Ashley. So next myth, um, my team doesn't know how to chat which oh. uh, used to be a bit more common a few years ago, but uh, we still hear it uh, from time to time today. So I think we should address it once and for all. And I can't think of anybody better than our self-proclaimed automotive data scientist to take this one on, Chris. Uh, I, are you ready? Are you going to debunk it? I want to debunk it. Let's bust this one. All right, show and, me what you got. <laughs> let me start by saying, Jason, into everyone, come on, guys and gals, give your team some credit here and, and stop acting like chat is some kind of newfangled technology that no one understands. I mean, my gosh, the first time on chat was sent uh, all the way back in 1961. That's 60 years ago. 
It wow. happened at MIT, <laughs> and it really set the stage for what would become modern messaging as we know it. And as you can see here in the timeline, the simple art of typing messages and sending them instantly has grown decade after decade. Chat is literally how the majority of our social interactions are happening these days. So if your team interacts this way each and every day with their friends and family, why can't they do it with your customers? Mm -hmm. Pro you Professor Colson, throwing it Nailed down. It. <laughs> My man. <laughs> No, and remember, guess, something else to remember, too. It's like, this is something I think we need to remind ourselves. Not only have we been chatting our whole lives, no one's ever going to ask you a question in chat that you're not already answering every day face to face over the phone or, or through an email. So there's, there's like nothing to be afraid of, is there? Nothing. <laughs> OK, well, I keep lobbing uh, myths at you all and you keep slamming them down, which is great. So <laughs> let's keep rolling with myth number four here. Uh, chat tools are too complicated. Uh, and I was hoping if it's okay with you guys, since you did so well, can I can I try debunking this one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please. Have yeah. Have oh it. Thank you so much. Means. Thank you so much. Uh, so the reason why I wanted to debunk with this one because I actually have a personal story related directly to this. Um, so the last major project I worked on as a car dealer before joining the team here at Deal Inspire uh, was to vet all the available chat providers because we wanted to be able to handle our own chats across a, an entire automotive group. So we brought in like all the vendors, every single one. Uh, we listened to their pitches on why their tools were allegedly the best. Uh, but we always had to ask like this one follow-up question after we got the pitch, which was like, okay, that's neat, but can you show us the interface that our team will actually be using to answer chats? None of the chat providers had that interface for dealers. The entire, the, the entire product category was predicated on managed chat. Uh, so it really wasn't, it was just a couple months after that, that I found myself at the offices of Dealer Inspire in downtown Naperville interviewing uh, for a job. So I meet the team, trying to make everyone like me, uh, really hoping that I'm offered a, a position to join the team here. And uh, as we're going throughout the day, you know, uh, CEO Joe Chur is like, hey man, do you want to sit on, on this meeting I'm about to have? Uh, it's with our devs. I'm getting an update on this messaging platform that we're about to launch called Conversations. Uh, so I'm like all sorts of pumped up to be a fly on the wall here. And what I can tell you from that meeting back in 2000, like the early 2016 was, is that from the very beginning, before it was even an official product, it was literally the product that we were shopping for just a couple months earlier there. Yeah. So yes, Conversations was built from the very beginning with dealers in mind to be easy to use. Does that make sense? Yeah. Completely. I, Oh, good. I'm glad you. I wasn't. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the audience, but you answered for it. That's great. <laughs> Sold, Chris. You're going to buy three. Uh, press hard. Three copies. We'll talk after the show here. Uh, okay, <laughs> moving on. Chat myth number five. Uh, people only use chat to answer questions like "Are you open?" or "Where are you located?" We've mentioned that a couple times so far. Uh, now, at one point in time, before Google had like organized the world's information and local search results, this was actually somewhat true. Uh, but but what kind of questions today uh, are people really asking, Celia? Can you bust this myth for us? Yeah. Yeah. So going back to uh, what I said earlier about consumers asking more than just generic questions, I wanted to pull some real examples because I think visually seeing this will make more impact on how we look at conversations. So in this first one, right, we have a shopper, right, and they're asking for some lease quotes, which is a fair question. Uh, the managed chat agent is the one to respond and she does her job by asking for the shopper's contact info so someone at the dealership can follow up with the quotes but if you read the shopper's digital body language here it's easy to see that he's part of the majority of shoppers who need to know if they can afford the vehicle that they're interested in before they make the trip to the dealership so you know like he's saying that to the chat agent before he disconnects here's another one so uh this one a customer starts a chat to ask if a vehicle is available for a test drive next week. So this is great. This should be an easy appointment set. But as the managed chat agent answers with the standard reply, the shopper realizes that this particular vehicle is actually marked in transit on the website. And she actually is talking herself out of the test drive and she closes out the chat. So in this instance, there's really nothing that managed chat agent could have done differently because this is definitely a chat that is someone in the internet, or maybe it was a BDC department, they would be able to have answered this by themselves or even used our department transfer feature to connect it over to a sales manager. So I think the important thing to note with this example is manage chat, the agents, their job is to get contact information to make the connection with the dealership, but consumers want you and they think they're talking to you. So 
if you would have answered the chat, right, I'm guessing you would have answered her original question with an instant and affirmative yes to get them that appointment set. And yeah. even if she still noticed the vehicle was in transit, uh, you most likely at the dealership would have been in control of that conversation to scheduling that type of an appointment. Yeah, and that's that's a great point, Celia, because, you know, as like as salespeople, I, I'm sure Chris can relate to this as well. It's like we're, we're programmed to say yes <laughs> right away. Like, hey, can I do the Yes. Always. Right. And then you just you got it right. You take mm -hmm. it from there. So that's that's a really great example. I'm glad you yeah. turned that one up. Yeah, I got uh, one more if we have time. So here. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Knocking them down. <laughs> got it. Um, here's a shopper, right? Essentially asking two questions. So one's about leasing a vehicle in general. Um, and the other one is about asking about these two vehicles that are marked in the dealership's inventory is in transit. So again, a chat agent here, same thing. They're going for the lead, but this time, um, it looks like the shopper just bails out of the chat out of frustration, which honestly I can totally get. And I'm sure you guys can too. Um, mm -hmm. how frustrating can it be if someone's asking a question and they don't have an answer to the direct question you're asking? So again, this isn't necessarily the managed chat agent's fault. Um, she's just doing you know, her or his job here. But if you're looking for more appointments and sales, right? Like who isn't, um, this should be an easy lead. So answering the questions, build the value, set the appointment, uh, our sales teams, BDCs, these folks are trained to close these type of deals. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right. So clearly, right. Those are three examples of real buying questions being asked. And that didn't have anything to do with, you know, the generic hours and directions, um, like some of the myths that were busting, but I don't really like to say this because it's not great, but it's also going to illustrate the point with the most impact that all three of these chats actually took place at the same dealership mm. on the same day within four and a half hours of each other. So here we have like three low funnel shoppers, each interested in a specific vehicle choosing to interact with this dealership with chat. I think the analogy for that, Celia, and I'm glad that you laid it out that these all happen really close to each other at the same dealership. It'd be like just having like a customer out on your lot, just start answering questions for other customers <laughs> wrongly or not accurately <laughs> right. instead of you. And you'd be like, you know what? Tommy's a good guy. He comes in for service. Like, go ahead. Answer them. We're fine. No, you can never do that. Um, so look, I mean, to me, that's that's all I need to see to be like, yep, I'm definitely taking my chat back. Right. Um, these are conversations that I want to have in the moment. But look, even if you're watching this and you totally agree that you should be answering your own chats, you also might describe one of these other popular myths out there, uh, which is that, hey, you know what? Yeah, I should be answering them, but I can't afford to hire people to answer chats. So fortunately, mm -hmm. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Chris, what mm -hmm. say you, sir? Yes, I, I'd love to bust this one. Uh, the number one thing I want you to remember when it comes to chat is that when your shopper engages with your chat tool, they think they're talking to you. Let me say that again. People think they're talking to you when they use your chat tool or message you via Facebook. And why wouldn't they think that, right? They're on your website. Just because we know that the website chats are being answered in the call center, that doesn't mean the consumer has any reason to think or expect that to be the case, right? And look, when it comes to going up against the Vroomvanas of the world, you as local dealers have far superior customer service. So don't outsource your biggest competitive advantage. You can actually provide the same level of online convenience Vroom and Carvana are selling, and then one up them by having those instant technologies that connect directly with your friendly expert local team. Yeah, and that's a, that's a great point. They think they're talking to you. And when you bring up like the Vrooms and Carvanas of the world, fun fact is, is like Vroom doesn't even have chat as a way for a customer to connect with them. And Carvana didn't have chat until like very, very recently. Mm -hmm. I think ever since we called them out on a webinar for not having chat a few months ago, and then yeah. now magically they have it. Uh, but it's still really hard to connect with somebody through their website, even that way. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of crazy. They think they're talking to you. Exactly. It's just one more reason why you take back your chat and really stick it to those industry disruptors, right? Stick it. Uh, <laughs> and go, going back to what Ashley said earlier, which is great, dealers on average are receiving about eight chats per day during business hours. So a healthy amount for sure, but don't not something that you should feel overwhelmed by. And based on my own experience, both as a dealer and now supporting dealers, the main blocker that pops up usually has to do with staffing. And really, it's not as big of a deal as you might think it is. You don't need to hire people specifically to answer chats, right? Again, we're talking eight chats per day right now. So depending on how many how your dealership is set up, your BDC could take all the incoming chats. If you don't have a BDC but have internet salespeople, then that's an option as well. Uh, we're also seeing that more and more dealers adopt a digital showroom department 
with the sales managers and salespeople to take those incoming chats, but also work deals online through the digital retailing tools, schedule at-home test drives, deliveries, and really take that level uh, of customer service up a notch or three. Regardless of your dealership's organizational structure, you'll have you'll want to have multiple people set up agents uh, for sales and service the way your team has best chance to quickly answer those chats and work towards turning it into an appointment. Yeah. And, and thank you, Chris. I appreciate you uh, yeah. debunking that myth, which really leads nicely uh, into our last one here, which essentially says, why should I answer my own chats? Because isn't that what managed chat is for? I feel like we've really done a good job of debunking this uh, myth on the way here. Uh, but Ashley, how about you just put this one to bed once and for all? Yes. And please understand, no one here today is saying that there isn't essential value to having managed chat because there certainly is. And in an extremely busy 24-7 landscape, you need someone to have your back when you can't answer chats. I like to think of it like this. Having managed chat is like having a great superhero sidekick, the Robin to your Batman, if you will. They always have your back and they have a few tricks up their own sleeve. However, they're not quite to the superhero level, um, which is you, by the way. Um, but as more custom consumers use chat to seek out the answers to their most important questions that directly impact their buying, selling, and service decisions, letting your sidekick handle everything on their own could be costing you some immediate opportunities. So, when we say it's critical for all sides of your business to answer their own chats, that also comes with the ex expectation that managed chat will still be there to have your back. So what we've recom been recommending to our clients and partners is a hybrid approach to chat, meaning your team is up to bat and ready to answer inbound chats during business hours. But when it's after hours or you're closed on a holiday, or it's one of those instances where when one of your own team is indeed too busy to answer, then your managed chat sidekick jumps into action to handle things in your absence. And, and to really drive that point home, how integral a role chat plays in the overall customer experience, we're starting to see customers mention chat specifically in their online reviews. I mean, these are just the, some we found on, on Dealer Reader from really recently. Uh, this is crazy, Ashley. Wow. Yeah, 100%. These are just examples of dealer rater reviews that specifically mention chat and the impact that it had on their decision making. It's huge. Yeah, it's 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 crazy how impactful this is. And when you are handling those chats, it's going to end up in your online reviews, which in turn is going to drive more people to be like, I'm going to ask my question via chat. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. like this self uh, fulfilling prophecy kind of thing. OK, so that was some pretty cool stuff and some touch, not top, not some. <laughs> <laughs> Some top-notch myth-busting team. Wow. Uh, so kudos to you. Give yourselves a round of applause. So hopefully by now you've seen the value of answering your chats, just like you with the telephone or an email. But before we move on to showing you how to connect your platform, I thought it would be fun to, to look at a chat, a real chat uh, that was handled by a managed chat agent and show you how it could have ended differently uh, if you were answering it in the dealership. And Chris, I want you to play this game with me. Um, you want, do you want to play? You want to play I would, uh, how it should have been? Ended? I'm game. Let's do it. All right. So that's the first thing. Let's look at the chat again. Every chat that you're seeing in this presentation today is a real chat uh, that happened within conversations uh, that we pulled from the transcript to put in here. So this is a real chat. Uh, okay. So here we go, Chris. Here is this chat. Uh, as it happened, uh, a shopper started the chat uh, and asked to make an appointment to test drive a 2021 Ford Expedition. All right. Just from this first line, Chris, what's your prediction on how this will end? This is an appointment waiting to be booked. Mark it down. Right. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see how it really goes. So, Mammoth Chat Agent answers, replies with that standard, "Hey, give me your contact information. We'll get back to you." Uh, but as the chat agent is sending that reply, it looks like the customer has a quick follow up, uh, saying, "Hey, we've got a 2016 Explorer XLT we want to trade in." Okay, cool. So, what do you think now, Chris? What's what's going on here? It's. I mean, it's. We're, we're slowly starting to uh, turn this uh, buyer into a shopper, as they would say. Uh, so it's. Not, not, not really the the personalized touch or feel that I think uh, we could have uh, conveyed here at all. Yeah, I mean, it's like they're asking for a test drive. They're putting their trade out there right up front. Right. I mean, it should be a sale waiting to happen, but it didn't go that way. And we're gonna we're gonna play a little game of how it should have ended here, as if you handled this chat in the dealership. Chris, you're gonna be the Ooh. chat agent, Love uh, it. and uh, I will I will be the customer. 
Okay. Or somebody will be the customer. <laughs> there okay. will be a customer. So Good. are you ready? You ready to go? I am ready. Ready to play. All right. Let, let, let's get this going in three, two, one, go. So what do you say we run this back the right way and maybe rewind time a little? And we'll await the incoming chat. Here it is and perfect. All right. And I am interested in the 2021 expedition. Like before, can I make an appointment to test drive? You're damn right you can, but we're not going to type that, right? So we're going to put absolutely. <laughs> Let's get you all set up. But first and foremost, we want to know whom do we have the pleasure of speaking with, right? Whom do I have the pleasure of speaking with? And we're going to fire this off. Not too rusty, right, Jason? No, that's not bad. And you know, if I was your sales manager, I'd be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow you damn right I can. <laughs> I would, I would let that go. <laughs> All right, and and here she is. It's Kara McGarvey. So not only is it no, so nice to meet you, Kara. All right, but this is the part right here that I wanted to talk about with everyone. It, it's kind of the nexus for your team. And as I know, there's a lot of teams out there where the BDC agent or sales staff might be a little short on their words, or maybe struggle with some of their wording. Uh, there's many times I personally recall, Jason, I had to load lists of staff members on exactly what to say at the right moment. Uh, no longer does that need to take place, though, which is great, especially with these programmable hotkeys and conversations that I'm going to show you. With hotkeys, not only do the words come naturally for you and your team, but the words that should have been sent to Kara from Jump Street in that original message are right here at your disposal. Plus, I thoroughly believe that sales are never lost by a few dollars. They're always lost by a few words. So that being said, let's find the right words in our hotkeys here for our client, Kara. And I think we might jump right here to the sales. And I think we have the perfect one right here. And we do. Yeah, that said, let's find. Now, we all know, again, right, with the expedition, it comes so many different vast features and different trim levels. And it can be quite a bit to digest, right? So not only did I find the perfect one for this, the, the hockey in this scenario, but I'm gonna fire this off to Kara, right? To find out exactly what feature maybe specifically she needs to have or would like to have. Um, and we can see she's typing right now, which is fantastic. Let's see if there is something, and there it is. Yep, I have to have the rear entertainment center for the kids, which is great. Okay, perfect. So I know what I am going to do right now is I'm gonna let her know first and foremost, perfect, let me see what is available, right? Let me you're, like, you're like a personal shopper right now, Chris. This is awesome. I, I'm loving it. This brings back some memories. Jeez Louise. You see what is available. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to look in stock here. And I'm going to type in, because I know she's looking for the XLT, right? With the rear yep. entertainment system. So I'm going to do this. And I know for my inventory, because I did my lot walk earlier, that this red one happens to have it. So I'm going to throw that into the conversation, right? Watch this. We're going to fire that off. So easy. And then, it, right? And then guess what? I'm going to pair it with another. Guess what, Jason? Hockey. Hey, here it comes. <laughs> this one is in stock and available for a test drive. When would you like to come in? Tomorrow or today? We're going to be direct, right? So let's wait for her response. And I love the tomorrow or today because you always put the one you want second, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, she wrote, this looks great. Thank you. I can do tomorrow at 10 a.m. Well, guess what? Not only does that work for me because I practically live the dealership, right? That <laughs> works for me. All right. But guess what? Dude. Let's shoot Kara another hotkey real quick. Okay. But instead of going up to the hotkeys, we're going to use the forward slash commands through the almighty hotkeys. So watch this. Being not only do we you know, want Kara's contact info at this time, right? But I also found this to be a much, much smoother way to ask for her cell number. So we'll do a forward slash. Watch this. And then we're going to put the word text, right? And if you notice, it populates, is it okay to text you an appointment reminder along with a link to directions to our dealership? And boom, I'm going to fire that off into the conversation for Kara. Chris, do you still do you still have a cot at the old dealership you used to work? At? I I did them at the green the green military ones. Yes. And then here we go. We have her. We have the digits, which is great. Love that. We're going to be able to uh, get things rocking and rolling. And then and then here we go. She just threw it at us. It gets even better. Would you look at that? Kara wants a, to, a 2021 to replace her 2016. And I definitely would love to take that off her hands. Um, Ken, you know what time it is, Jason? Hockey time. Yes, but we're, we're going forward slash again. But instead of text, we're going to write the word trade. And look at this. 
see that value your trade button after we're done here you go right ahead and click into that estimated value on your current vehicle and it'll take less than 60 seconds right How that's awesome pretty neat that? i like that oh she must think it's neat too oh neat thank you love it so right now we, she's obviously confirmed so i'm going to put okay kara your appointment is confirmed oops for 10 a.m tomorrow exclamation point because i am just as excited as it sounds like she is all right here we go nope she's typing she writes thank you so much can't wait love it so one more real quick being be that my store has dealer inspires modern retailing uh solution online shopper i can also help save care some more time as she helps even qualify herself further down the funnel while she's on our site all the while having a great digital experience so you guess you know you know what's coming next one more hot key for good measure here we go back to the sales right here also if you want to click on the show payment options button it's your screen the deal started ahead of time and that works for you and we see that she's typing again and i think we are almost done jason stum i brother i think you did it i think you took that exact oh. same chat that started Didn't out we? uh that we looked at that started out as uh you know not going so well with man chat and you nailed it bro you set the appointment you did it i, I did it. it holy cow what do you Voila. think team celia ashley how did chris do gold star yeah. i think you. the key yeah. here is we work smarter not harder with yeah that. that's right that's right. And conversations certainly allows you to work smarter and not harder. Way better. Powerful okay. Job, guys. All right. So you noticed that Chris was using a bunch of hotkeys, so he didn't have to type out those longer responses. And conversations does come with some common pre-baked hotkey responses for you to use. But, but you can also add your own. And for those attending the webinar today, we actually, uh, our team has put together a list of even more hot key ideas that you can program for use in conversations. So just raise your hand if the, in the chat if you want the list and we will DM it to you so you can use it. Uh, and so that was a, a great demo there, Chris. I really appreciate that. And hopefully by now, if you're not already, already handling your own chats, uh, you're at least seriously thinking about it. Uh, because what we're going to talk about next is how you can actually increase the number and quality of chats that you'll receive by connecting your platform. So, Ashley, let's talk about this. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? All right. Well, one of the great things about the Dealer Inspire platform is that it lets our power users like Jeff, Jeff Revilla from the Smail Auto Group get creative all on their own. He recently shared with us how he's using simple code tricks to get people to start conversations or even land them directly in the trade in flow across his website and his marketing channels. There are a couple different ways to do this. In the first example, conversations is open from any hyperlink on your website using a teeny tiny little bit of JavaScript code. So any link or CTA button that is on your website, you can use this code to have the conversations trade in flow open upon clicking or tapping it. Or as seen in the second example, you can use an HTML parameter at the end of any URL to land someone directly into the trade and flow from an external source. So I want to make sure I got this straight, Ashley. So the first example uh, that we're seeing here is for links on your website. Uh, and then the second example with the HTML parameter, that is for external links like from your marketing, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. Uh, so can you give us uh, some more examples of, of how this could work uh, in action? Yeah, for sure. So let's start with some on-site examples first. One neat trick is to program an SRP banner to open up the chat experience. These type of call-outs are great because one, it's a big giant reminder that you're available to answer questions. And two, the shopper can just tap or click the banner to, to begin the chat. Sometimes going the extra mile to inform your shoppers that there's an instant chat experience waiting for them is all it takes to increase engagement which in turn takes a formerly anonymous shopper and turns them into a new customer for you to engage and meet with. Yeah, yes, 100%. And if I'm putting my GSM hat here on Ashley, it's also worth pointing out that normally you have offer and center banners in this space, right? Yeah. But honestly, with the inventory shortage affecting so many dealers, there really isn't any reason to talk about discounts on one of the most visible places on your website. 
So instead, present your users with messages like the one Ashley just laid out to keep your shoppers engaged with you at the dealership. You just can't afford right now to leave your customers feeling like you don't have what they're looking for or doing absolutely everything you can to make an instant connection in your digital showroom. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a that's a great point, Chris. Um, Ashley, what else you got? All right, of course. So you can get creative with DI's personalizer as well to prompt users to engage in conversations. So in this example, we're simply creating a personalizer based on the returning visitor variable to present them with a message saying that if you need help getting the A's to your Q's, we're here to help. Chat with us now. And that chat button opens up the chat. The idea here is that somebody's coming back to your website, then clearly they still don't have all the information they need to make a decision. So why not offer to help them in real time? Again, this is only something you should do if your team is actually going to answer the chat and actually help the customer in the moment. Yeah, and that definitely makes a lot of sense. Uh, moving on to our next slide here. What's go okay? What's going on here? What kind of wizardry uh, is this actually? What am I looking at? All right. Well, I this I don't know if I've seen this before. Yeah, this is really exciting. This is this is something I recently cooked up for my client Southview Acura here in Alberta. I programmed a value my trade button on their action bar to open up the trade in landing page that explains why a customer should trade in their car with them. And it automatically opens up the automated trade and workflow within conversations at the same time. This is just one example of many where having a connected platform gives you the flexibility to create your own user experiences to move the needle. So you you did that? Really good. Yes. <laughs> you like some kind of HTML coding wizard? And no, I like I I'm... No. I'm pretty good with the website, but I am not a developer. This was really, really easy and straightforward. Nice. That is so awesome. I love seeing these things come together and get connected. Uh, and I think it's, you know, it's important for all of us to remember that managing your own chat, it just doesn't help like the sales side of the biz. You know, mm -hmm. it, it can be for service too, right? Yeah, exactly. So once you get comfortable managing your own chat and it just becomes part of your everyday routine, then there's so much more that you can do. I mean, the service implications alone are huge. And you can really step up your messaging game by using your chat tool as your service drives outbound messaging manager. Conversations lets you send outbound text messages so that you can use that capability in your service department to keep customers updated on the status of the repair or go that extra mile and text quick videos of items that need attention. Think about that customer who comes in for an oil change and a tire rotation. And as your tech is rotating the tires, he notices that the customer's tread depth is low on all four tires. So you can snap a quick, uh, snap, snap a quick pic or shoot a quick vid of this situation and text it to your customer along with the cost for replacing all the tires. And there you have it, an instant upsell opportunity with a text message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's pretty cool because what do they say? Like a picture tells a thousand words, but a video tells a million words. Um, especially so much powerful with things like that when you're trying to explain to somebody what they need uh, instead of leaving that on a voicemail or even just as a written tech message to show them with video. Like, here's what you need. I think yeah. it's going to be a lot more uh, easier to get the yeah. You know what? We need the tires. Let's do it. It goes a long way to really develop that trust factor too. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So I, I like the way you're thinking there in service. What else What else can we do in the old service lane there? All right. Well, as you start to review your chat, chat transcripts, you'll quickly see how a chat can start off as a service request and then instantly pivot into a sales question. It happens the opposite too. You're chatting with someone about buying a vehicle and they're like, oh yeah, I need to get an oil change. Can you set me up with that? Once you've assembled your team, you can easily loop in your teammates for a seamless transition in the chat just like you would if you were walking that guest from the showroom floor to the service drive. Yeah, and that's huge. Is like really what we're talking about with our digital platform is, is replicating everything that you can do in the store so you can do it from uh, the website as well, which is awesome. Absolutely. And I'm totally picking up what you're putting down here, Ashley. Uh, please tell me more things. <laughs> All right, more. here it goes. So check this out. A chat comes in. It's a customer who needs to schedule a service appointment. And as you're taking that customer's information to get them scheduled, you casually ask them about having the vehicle appraised while it's in the shop. So something like, mm -hmm. hey, while your vehicle's in for service, would you be open to finding how much, finding out how much it's worth and instantly create that warm handoff for your sales team when the customer comes in for service? 
we actually included this as a line in one of our hotkeys that we mentioned earlier. So make sure you raise your hand on that one if you want the doc. Yeah, and that as as I know very very well, that sales to uh, that service to sales handoff is huge. Uh, huge. Without that, yeah. I would have been four, four mm -hmm. cars dumb. And, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so thanks for thanks for calling that out again. Yeah. You know, I reckon actually now that we got our like now we're brainstorming a little bit too. Uh, a dealer's retail's parts counter could probably benefit from being a part of the chat team too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Your messaging platform can be a critical part of your entire operation. Sales, vehicle acquisition, service, F&I, and yes, even parts. It's totally not uncommon to see people asking parts-related questions via chat. And why wouldn't they? Remember, they think they're talking to you. So they're asking detailed questions about price and availability about a specific part, and their expectation is that they can use chat to get a quick answer to their question, not to leave a voicemail and wait for someone to get back to them. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's this thing about parts. It's like, if you're not answering that question right then and there, and it's just, you know, a managed chat agent is taking the name and number, my next move as a customer is I'm calling Pep Boys or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the, the retail parts store down the street. So those parts questions, it's really important that mm -hmm. you're uh, answering them in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this is interesting. I, this is something I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about the contextual difference between like a conversation that takes place on a web-based chat versus a, a text-based, text message-based conversation. Yeah, it's easy to forget that when you use chat on any website, the expectation is that it's a one-time thing with a distinct beginning and an end, right? You start the chat because you have a question. And then once you get the answer, you're done. Chat over. And with the average website dura session duration be being between three to five minutes, that's not a whole lot, lot of time to build a lasting connection. But if you're handling the chat and then hopefully get you got their contact information, uh, you can follow up as needed, which allows you to build that trust and rapport to be built via text message. So it's more of a long running experience, right? That's because our expectation around texting is that it's a long-term thing. There's ongoing back and forth. Time can elapse between responses. And yes, sometimes you'll get left on red longer than you're, you'd like. <laughs> but the history is there for both you and the customer to review. The point is, if you haven't already made text your first choice for establishing and maintaining communication to provide long-term follow-up, now is the time to do so. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, conversations makes it really easy, right? You know, as a dealer, you can send uh, outbound text through conversations, but also like as the end user, you can actually transfer yourself from the web-based chat to a text-based one, which is you just tap the little button and it will send you the chat right to your phone. And so you can keep on having that long running conversation, easy, which is easy. very cool. Yeah, Love easy, it. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> it. All right, now talk to me about video. We alluded to it earlier. Uh, since the pandemic, we've been having way more video calls than before. It's kind of ingrained in this mm -hmm. now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look at what we're doing right now. Let's revisit the chat from earlier when we had a customer looking to make the trip from Kansas to Colorado that was handled by a managed chat agent. Imagine you're handling the very same chat at the dealership. You could start a live video session with that customer, show them the vehicle, do a walk around, and now you're in a position to get a deposit and lock down the sale so that they can make that out of state or out of province trip with confidence. Right. So and again, it, it's that local advantage that you have. You mm -hmm. have the tech, you have the tools, you have the team put to use win that sale. Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like pretty connected. Yeah. But um, okay. What are you guys doing to me here? Is this real? Ashley, what, what is this? <laughs> this What's is happening? totally real. And it mm -hmm. really makes so much sense. This is a really great tip for your delivery specialist. When you're delivering a vehicle to your guest, recommend that they add your conversation SMS text number or do it for them. Add it as a contact for your service department in their iPhone. Then if they should ever need anything, there is a simple, hey Siri, command away from sending you a text message with their voice that will appear as a new conversation for your team to handle. So so we're even, we're connecting conversations to cars now. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's okay. That's that's cool. That's, <laughs> it, uh, I believe, uh, the, does that work for Android Auto too? It's not just, it's not yeah. just Apple CarPlay, right? Yep. Android users rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> 
we could do that too. Uh, oh my gosh, Ashley, thank you so much for uh, teaching us all a bunch of really cool ways to connect our platform uh, to chat. And for our last section here, let's talk about how you can incorporate your messaging capabilities into your marketing strategy to really amp things up by starting conversations that begin somewhere other than your website. So Celia, uh, you've been quiet for a few minutes. Jump back in here and let's talk about this. Where on earth do we start? Yeah. So Ashley already explained it. So you can use uh, coded external links to land people directly into a chat experience, right? And there are a lot of different ways that we can do this. And I want to stress that we want to do this. Uh, so there's a big opportunity right now with social ads. So you can create an entire social ad campaign designed to engage uh, all of your in-market shoppers right there in their newsfeed. Um, the example that we have here, it's targeting uh, shoppers on Facebook to let them know that they can get a value for their current vehicle in less than 30 seconds. So since conversations integrates directly with Facebook Messenger, the user is having this experience within the Facebook ecosystem, but it's all powered by conversations. Yeah, and that is pretty cool. Uh, and what else can you do to get people from an ad directly into a conversation that like converts? Yeah, so something that we've talked a lot about in the beginning of inventory shortages is to include a value your trade site link um, in your make and model and dealer name uh, for paid search campaigns on Google or Bing. So you can simply use that special URL perimeter to take someone from ad to an instant trading experience within conversations just like that. And as part, um, what we've seen is we're seeing an increase of 45% in conversion rates for dealers who incorporate that kind of instant and automated experience in their search ads. Yeah, it's crazy how when you just make something easy and get people directly to where they want to be, mm -hmm. how you get those conversions. That's, That's awesome. Uh, now, this is something our viewers at home probably haven't thought of, uh, including CTAs to chat in your email. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this one, Celia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> right, Chris. Um, so we've been talking a lot about important messaging and texting in today's consumer or texting um, is today's consumer. So let's face it, like if you're still going to have leads in your system where all you have is their email address, that's fine. Uh, we can meet people in their inbox. So mm -hmm. that code CTA within your email to land the user right into the chat experience on your website again is a really easy win. So whether it's taking them to an automated trade and value workflow or having them schedule a service appoint, appointment, now you have an opportunity to get their phone number to add to their record. Um, not so you can call them, but so you can text them. Right. And I, and I, uh, Celia, well, I really like this move here because you guys remember this. What would be the standard CRM reply if you didn't have their phone number, right? So their initial lead would come in. They might have a question. You would vaguely mm -hmm. answer it, but you're really saying, what's your best phone number so I can call you right. and give you the answer? And then they respond, be like, can't you just tell me the answer? <laughs> so this is a much better way to get someone into a different experience that they're in control of where you can still get their phone number uh, and still give them the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very cool way to get people from an email to a chat to get that phone Super. number, which I love. Uh, okay, so speaking of things you might not have realized, uh, if you're a conversations client and a cars.com customer, then you can actually be present to personally engage with that massive audience too from your vehicle listings on cars.com. Is this right, Celia? This is for sure right. So cars.com, we have over 26 million monthly users. That's big. Um, and we've said too many times to count, people aren't shopping for toasters on cars.com, right? Like they're shopping for cars. So you can meet those shoppers on cars.com and then there's a lot of opportunity from there. So these are always going to be um, high funnel shoppers that in most cases haven't decided uh, where to buy, but they plan to buy soon, we know that. So this is a chance to meet those shoppers where they are, connect with them instantly, and then take them from a top of the funnel to being hooked um, at, for your customer service via chat. And it happens, you know, organically just like that. Yeah, it's that instant connection from like, mm -hmm. yeah, 92% of people on cars.com, they don't know where they're going to buy yet. You know, they're still top funnel, like you said, trying to figure it out. But to literally instantly go from here to here through a chat on cars.com, that is mm -hmm. huge. Awesome. Uh, you're, you're just, you're rolling now, Celia. I Great job, Celia. Yeah. I'll let you yeah. talk more. What else you got? Yeah, okay. So we can't sleep on traditional marketing opportunities because we still need a line of communication for that consumer. So what if I told you you could even integrate your chat tool on, say, a billboard? Um, you could and you mm -hmm. should. And it goes past billboards, too. Like This can apply to any traditional media or lot signage. So using that SMS text number on, um, from your chat provider can totally unleash a chat base. 
Um, and there's really just so much you can do with it. So, you know, I used to be a digital marketing manager for an automotive group here. Uh, we invested a lot in traditional advertising and that was over five years ago now. But I'm telling you, if I could have thrown a QR code or an SMS text number on a direct mail piece or a billboard that would have instantly landed, you know, a person into a chat experience, I would have been all over that. Mm -hmm. um, there's really no better way to prove your traditional advertising dollars are being well spent um, than making it highly actionable. So if those traditional ads are driving digital engagement uh, via chat, then you know without a doubt that they're working for you. Yeah. Yeah, Celia, did you just say QR code? Because <laughs> you know what? You know I love me some QR codes. I know you love QR codes. Um, <laughs> and so do I. So it's, it's really about the opportunity. So if you have the opportunity uh, to use a QR code on your print ads or say it's your billboards or even on cars on your lot uh, for the, like I like to call it, the after hour tire kickers, um, there's just a lot of different opportunities. So in the visual here um, on the screen, we have a direct mail piece example that's landing a user in the automated trade-in flow with conversations. But depending on your intent, you could also have that code connect the user directly to a salesperson or even to a service advisor. So there's actually a bunch of cool things you can do with QR codes. So if you have your phone handy, open up your phone uh, camera app, point it to a QR code, point it to this QR code, and um, just to see what we're talking about. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, let me say this while we give uh, everyone a quick second to uh, scan that QR code uh, with their phone. The pandemic changed uh, user behavior like permanently. Uh, and, and we've seen that in a lot of different ways. And while QR codes have been around for like well over a decade, they really didn't find mainstream adoption here in the US until the past year. So it's tough, mm -hmm. right, not to go somewhere today and not see QR codes in use, right? I just picked up the, the Taco Bell app from a QR code in the drive-thru. I'm like, I should not be waiting in this line. I saw they had a QR code to get the app. I'm like, heck yeah. Boop. Next they're, time they're, Taco Bell's going to be all set. Thank you, QR code. There were restaurants now that are using it for menus left yeah. and right too. Yeah. yeah. That's all yeah. over so, the touch list. Yeah. You, I it's, love it. Again, another no-brainer. So Celia, thank you for covering that yeah. as well. What, what are we talking about here? Let's bring this home, Celia. Yeah. So I feel like we did a really good job of showing you not just why and how you should handle your own chats, but I think it's uh, equally important of a role that your messaging platform also plays in the overall level of your customer service, uh, from your website to a QR code on a mailer, um, really any digital and traditional touch point in between. So when we say it's time to take your chat back, we're not just talking about responding to chats, but we're also talking about making your messaging platform the most valuable customer service asset and opening up that front door to your dealership showroom. And then what's really amazing is that conversation is built in a way to be flexible enough to meet the needs of a single point dealership all the way to the largest automotive groups in the country. Your chat agents can be part of teams that cover any number of dealerships and also um, dealerships within your automotive group. And if your automotive group runs a centralized BDC, then conversations can be the communication backbone in those instances as well. Yeah. And I just think that's like the, the really important way to say it. You know, we talked about a lot today, you know, speaking to like just from the individual group level, how it works for a dealership, but it just clearly scales all the way up, uh, you know, to single point dealerships, to automotive groups, big and small to become that communications platform. Um, Wow, that's just crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're handling your chats for multiple rooftops, right? Like all messages from all channels for all of your rooftops, they come into a singular interface where you can easily respond to each message. So even um, if you transfer them to a teammate in a different department or it might be an entirely different location and in a low inventory world where we're at right now, being able to connect the shopper with other members of your team in a different location is huge. Yeah, that is like big time huge. And when we talk about like customer service being a key differentiating factor between your dealership and a Carvana, I mean, that's that is real yep. because they can't do this kind of stuff. So own your own conversations and, and use them to your advantage for every single department in your dealership and your entire automotive group. And oh, my gosh, we did it. We made it to the very end. I appreciate everybody for sticking around with us here today. I hope you took some notes. I hope you grabbed some screenshots. Uh, and we're just going to review this one last time. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to smash those myths, knock them all down so you can own your own conversations. Uh, get your platform connected so you can have those conversations coming from anywhere and everywhere. And then put your messaging in your marketing 
to again create those digital engagements. Uh, so on behalf of the entire or entire Dealer Spire team, I want to thank you for being here today. And I also want to give a big round of applause, a big thank you to Celia, Ashley, and Chris. You guys, this you cry. I mean, my goodness, right back at I you. Couldn't ask, I couldn't ask for better teammates than you. Thanks three. for having us, uh, Jason. Yeah, it was so amazing. You guys are just so great at what you do. And if you want to learn more about conversations, you don't need to call us. You don't need to email us. <laughs> you just scan that QR code right there on your screen. And guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen when you scan that QR code? <laughs> That's right. You will start a chat with <laughs> us. And we will be happy to chat with you about conversations. If you're already a Dealer Inspire client, you can also just get in touch with your performance manager. Uh, and they will tell you everything you need to know. Uh, so that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We'll see you next month on another Dealer Inspire webinar. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.